In this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna work on creating high tech titles. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So this is one of those tutorials I love doing because there's a lot of abstract work that can go into this. And we're gonna focus on several cool techniques in this tutorial that are gonna allow you to create these high tech title graphics, which is great for anything in the theme of a sci-fi type project. So without wasting more time, let's go ahead and jump into our tutorial and let's get started. Okay, After Effects is loaded up and we saw the demo of what we'll be creating and it's this really cool HUD high tech element. Now, we'll go into our tutorial composition. I already have a title in here. We'll talk a little bit about the title at the end. And we already have a background. So we're gonna focus on creating this, you know, heads up display element. That's what it's called, our high tech element, sci-fi element. You know, let's go ahead and create this. So what we're gonna do is come here to the top and we're gonna grab one of these tools. We're gonna grab the ellipse tool, right? Then you wanna make sure you click on the word fill and set it to none, click okay. Click on the word stroke, set it to solid color, click okay. And you can come here and change the color to whatever you like. I'm gonna keep it white and we'll play with the stroke width in a second. So what we're gonna do is create a series of circles and we'll come here and draw out a perfect circle by holding down shift on our keyboard. Then we'll come here to the line tab and we'll center this up. Awesome. And now that we're here, what we need to make sure we do is make sure that the anchor point of this layer is in the center of our composition and we can do this by holding down control on our keyboard and double clicking the pan behind tool. Now if you're on a Mac that's going to be command double click the pan behind tool here and that anchor point should be in the center of your layer. And that's very important that we do this right now because later we're going to animate this and we don't want it to be buggy. And we can also affect the stroke width here at the top and this will make it a little skinnier, a little bit chubbier and whatever you want to do that's cool. Now what we can do here is we can duplicate this layer by going up to edit duplicate and we hit S on our keyboard for scale and we can scale this down. Cool. And we might want to increase the stroke width by a little bit because when you scale things uh, up or down, the size changes. So you might want to just change the stroke width by a little bit to keep the size a little bit more proportional. Okay. And then once again, we'll duplicate this, we'll scale it down and we'll make the stroke width a little bit bigger this time, actually a lot bigger. And simply we're just going to come here and create as many elements as we can. And we'll duplicate this again, scale it down, come here to the center, scale this up. All right, and we'll duplicate this, scale this one down, and increase the stroke width. All right, so now we have circles in here that we controlled the scale and the stroke width on. So let's continue to still work with circles, but we'll start creating more customized shapes. So let's go ahead and just duplicate one of these, bring up the scale. We'll scale this up by a little bit, go right here. I we'll want to bring that stroke width down. Then we'll come here into the shape layer, go to contents, click on ellipse one, go to stroke one, and we'll click on this plus button right here under dashes, and this will create a series of dashes that's cool and one thing I'll do is I will click the stopwatch for offset and we'll move forward to the end of our composition I'll just say six seconds and I'll animate this and so now this element will be moving here and that's cool then we'll go ahead and we'll duplicate this element and we'll hit S keyboard for scale it will scale this up then we'll bring down the stroke width by a little bit and this will kind of make things a little bit smaller scale that down now we can go back into the contents go into the stroke one we can open open up the dashes window and we can decrease the number of dashes or increase it just so we have that control and nice. So now we have this element here. We might need to scale down all of our layers so we can keep it inside the composition. That's very important. So you can just easily do that. All right, so now let's go ahead and create one more element. So I'm gonna grab one of these, you know, first layers here. I'll duplicate it. I'll bring it to the top for now. And then we'll hit S keyboard for scale and we'll scale this down. Then we'll open up our shape layer. We'll come here to add and we're gonna add a trim paths now. So if you watch several of my tutorials in the past, we use trim paths a lot on the channel. So if you're gonna watch more of our videos, we use the heck out of trim paths. So we'll come here, let's bring down the end percent and this will create just a very short line. That's cool, right? Then what we'll do is we'll click on the stopwatch for offset and we'll come here to five seconds or six seconds the end of our composition. And we'll just animate this like so. So this will kind of just spin here and that's cool. Then what we want to do is bring the trim paths into our lips one like so. Then we'll come here, we'll duplicate our lips two. Then we'll come here and we'll duplicate the ellipse. And then we'll come here into the transform ellipse two and then we can increase the rotation. Perfect. Then we'll duplicate this again. We'll increase the rotation and just keep doing that. So we have four, that's good enough. And we'll just duplicate one of our big lines here and we'll scale this down again and we'll try to get that back into that track and we'll scale this width up by a little bit and we can come here and just lower the opacity of this layer bring down t on our keyboard for opacity just bring that down to like maybe you know 10 percent or so put this layer underneath 
those layers there. So I think for this tutorial's purpose, this is good enough. I don't think we need to go crazy on this um, and go really detailed just for what we're doing because this is gonna be kind of out of focus, nice and glowed out. So this isn't much at the moment, but let's go ahead and make this really cool. So before we get into the cinematic scene setup, let's go ahead and animate this really quick. So what we can do, select all of our layers, hit S on keyboard for scale, and we'll add a keyframe for scale. And we'll move these keyframes forward in time, maybe to like a second or so. And then we'll bring the scale down to 0%. All right, awesome. So now, boom, the entire thing animates on like that. Now we want to be able to move the layers over and have everything come on in a sequential order. So we'll have it come from the outside to in. So what we need to do is find each layer and reorder it. So we need to find this out, outer layer here. And, you know, there it is. So we'll bring this to the bottom. And then we'll go ahead and find our second layer, which is right here. Awesome. And we'll offset this by just a few frames. We'll find the next layer, offset it by a few frames. Uh, find the next series of layers. So I know this is one and this is one bring these down here Offset them and you get the idea. All right, so now we'll go ahead and make this in 3d So what we'll do is go to layer new camera and we'll click. Okay, and okay So now we'll make sure all of our shape layers are 3d layers So you can click this 3d icon over here If you don't see the 3d icon just toggle switch the modes until you see it And then we'll come over here and grab the orbit camera tool and we can just rotate this all right, so you can see the entire image is in 3D space, but you know, it's still flat. So what we'll do here is we'll grab all of our shape layers except for the bottom layer. We'll hit P on keyboard for position and we will you know, move this up by a little bit. Then we'll deselect the bottom layer, move this one up by a little bit. Just by a touch, don't go crazy with it. Just very short, deselect that, move it up. All right, so now we have this shape in 3D space and we could create more depth. So now we have this three dimensional look of our heads up display here. And what we'll do here is we'll grab all of our shape layer elements and we'll just go ahead and pre compose it. Go up to layer pre compose and we'll call it HUD. All right. Now what we need to do is click on this continuously rasterize button here. So now we'll have all that data come over and you know, now we can still move this around and do what we need to do. So I'll go ahead and turn my title back on right now and we'll go over here and we'll grab the track uh, XY camera and we'll kind of move this over. We'll hit C on our keyboard to track to the Z camera track tool and we can move in a little bit. And then, you know, we can just move this over however we see fit. That's fine. And now we'll go ahead and just go to the camera here, go to transform, we'll add a keyframe for point of interest and position, move to the end of our composition. So we'll say six seconds. And I'll just rotate this by a little bit. All right, so here is our element and it's very, you know, not there yet, but we have the animation in there and it's looking, it's all coming together. So now what we'll do is we'll start putting that look together to make this look legit because I'm not going to leave you with a white HUD element. We want it to look like that. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It's very easy to do. So first things first, go to effect, generate, fill. And of course you can change the colors individually. But you know, I'm just gonna do this as one color because I think we get a little bit more, it's a little bit easier, a little bit quicker for a tutorial purpose, just keep it one color. And there's that. So we have it as orange. Now we'll come here to effect stylize glow. So we'll come here, increase the glow radius to about like 160%. Change the glow intensity to 1.6. And maybe we'll increase the glow threshold by a little bit. And now we'll come here and duplicate this effect and we'll bring up the glow radius to about 300. And then we'll bring down the glow radio or the glow intensity to like maybe 0.7 and decrease the glow threshold to about maybe like 15%. We have it all glowed out. We have the color in there, but this still isn't looking good. I want to make this look a little bit more cinematic. So we're going to add a depth of field in here with our camera. So we'll come here, go into our camera options. Then we'll turn the depth of field on. And now what we'll need to do is you know, find the focus distance here. So we'll kind of bring this down to maybe like 1200, the focus distance. And you can see things are a little bit out of focus. It's probably hard to see on YouTube. So we'll come here and increase the aperture to maybe like 300, 400 pixels. And wow, okay. So nothing's in focus. So we'll come here and we'll find a good focus point. So let's keep increasing the focus distance. So this is in focus here. And I want to keep the back end of this in focus. So I got to find that. And you just do that by scrubbing through. That's cool. Okay, so we'll just do that here and we'll add a keyframe for focus distance. We'll move to the end of our composition and we'll bring down the focus distance down to like maybe 1200 or so. And actually, I will reverse these keyframes. I think it'd be cooler that way. So right click, keyframe, 
All right, and then of course we go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and I just wanna go to effect, uh, noise and grain. I'm gonna add noise to this. I'm gonna set the noise to like 7% and uncheck use color noise, and this will just break everything up and make things a little bit more motion graphic y. So that's awesome. So the entire point of this video is to show how to create a motion graphic to complement a title sequence or whatever you know you're looking to do. And for a title you can do anything that you want. You know, we have tutorials on how to do like a glitch title or any other typography. So I'll go ahead and drop those links in the description if you want to learn how to create more you know in-depth titles. But for what I did here is I actually used uh, one of my favorite elements for After Effects called Motion Factory, which I'll link in the video description. And it simply has 555 uh, title presets that I can add and drag and drop in any After Effects composition. So I can come here and find a glitch title that I like. So I can grab, say, this title here and click on Create, and it'll automatically import it into my After Effects composition. And this can be on any After Effects composition. And I can come here, change out the title, you know, move this title around in our comp change the duration of this and now you know we have a title in here that we created within a couple seconds that has a higher end animation to it and of course if you're looking to save time on creating hud elements and there's also another pack called high tech builder which has over 400 high tech elements ranging from you know holograms to icons to shapes of text you know titles and of course a handful of complex circles which we just created which will help you save a lot of time when doing you know high tech motion graphics and vfx so so if you want to learn more about high tech builder and type builder to help you save a lot of time and increase the value of your work you can check your links in the video description i'll take you right over to those extensions so you can learn more and see in depth each of these elements so those are my techniques for creating high tech motion graphics if you did enjoy this video be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel sunduck film we post two post-production tutorials every single week right here you can also hit me up on my social media networks those links are in the video description and always be creative.